Good morning, happy Halloween, and a warm welcome to Unity on the Space Coast, whether you're joining us here live in the sanctuary or online. Please rise as you're able to join us for our opening song, Stayed on Spirit. I woke up this morning with my mind Stayed on spirit I woke up this morning with my mind Stayed on spirit You see, I woke up this morning with my mind Stayed on spirit Hallelujah! 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 I'm walking and talking with my mind. Stayed on spirit. I'm walking and talking with my mind. Stayed on spirit. I'm flying on my broom with my mind. Oh. Stayed on spirit. Hallelujah. 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 I'm singing and praising with my mind. Stayed on spirit. I'm singing and praising with my mind. Stayed on spirit. You know I'm singing and praising with my mind. Stayed on spirit. Hallelujah. 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 I woke up. Morning with my mind, stayed on spirit. You know, I woke up this morning with my mind, stayed on spirit. You see, I woke up this morning with my mind, stayed on spirit. Everybody, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, yeah, hallelujah. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! One more time! Hallelujah! 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 That was fun! Oh yeah! Let's pray. soul that is with us here in the building or or online there we go my apologies whether you're online or here in the building we send special prayers and we work together to raise the consciousness of each and every soul that is celebrating with us today we know that there's only one power in the universe and in our lives. God the good, omnipotent. When we give thanks for this in and after the nature of Jesus the Christ, and so it is. Amen. 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 Yay. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, Anne Marie is oh in the gosh. house. Oh my gosh, hi, sister. Yay, yay. And welcome to everybody online. We're so grateful that you have decided to spend the next hour of your time with us. I'm Reverend Roxanne Graves. I am the senior minister here at Unity on the Space Coast. And I can promise you there's absolutely <laughs> no place. I'd rather be right here, right now, than here with you. Oh, happy Halloween. We have um, SEE classes start tomorrow. Yay. For those who don't know what that is, it's spiritual education and enrichment. The classes start tomorrow. There are several available. If you are even the slightest bit interested, see me after service. I have flyers. We can still get you in. It's all very exciting. I actually brought a list for myself of what the classes are, just so you get an idea. We have both Bible overview for Christian scriptures and 
um, self-awareness, meditation practices, Unity Foundation, that's a great one for everybody. Metaphysics 1 and 2, History of New Thought, Healing and Wholeness. We've got Bible Inter, if you've ever been interested in metaphysically interpreting the Bible, that one's available too. So, and there are some others on there. Come and see me after service. Tomorrow's the big day. Um, next Sunday, we have a real honest-to-goodness potluck. I know we got this close to having one before. You can applaud for that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Hey, yeah. Absolutely. We have an honest to goodness potluck next Sunday. And Barb is bringing us an incredible Veterans Day program next week. Uh, we've got a special speaker who's going to do an MIA POW program. We've got uh, cadets that'll be presenting the colors. It's all very, very exciting. Um, so come again next week, and those of you who can make it, just come on in for next week. It'll be worth being here, I promise. But we'll be online as well. So with that said, we have Eric and Daniel with us again today. Yay! All right. Hey, guys. And I just, I kind of just want you guys to notice this. I don't think this music stand's ever been stretched up that high. <laughs> That's funny. It's good for you. It's, it's awesome. Yep. Awesome, awesome. And, uh, of course, we're all under the direction of our music director, Eric Brook. <laughs> Barbara McGillicuddy. Yay. And now... Me. You. Good morning. Good morning. This is the most favorite part of the service for me because we get to talk about our statement of being. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> I want to be a being someday. <laughs> please, uh, please join me in saying our statement of being. We, we are, are the, the creative, creative I am, am dedicating our lives to its full realization. realization. Through, through compassion, compassion inclusiveness, and joyous service. Amen. Now please join me, join me in our prayer for protection. Thank you. The, the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Amen. Here we go. Please Join rise us. as you're able for our next song, From Fear to Faith. Woohoo! One, two, three, four. We move from fear to faith. When we gather together to pray. The brighter of a brighter day, we move from fear to faith. We move from fear to faith. When we gather together to pray for the healing of this world. The dawning of a brighter day. We move, we move from fear. 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 To faith. That's right. Everyone. We move from fear. world and the dawning of a brighter day we move from fear to faith we move from fear to faith when we gather together to pray for the healing of this world Dawning of a 
of a brighter day. We move, we move from fear. 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 It's out of here. We move from fear to faith. Yay. You know what? I just want to do something very, very quickly. You can sit down, and those people in costumes, would you mind very quickly just walking across and waving to the camera so the people online can see all your great costumes? It's Don't a hell of a parade. Yeah, yeah, we'll do a little costume parade. Yay. Together to pray Darth Vader in the house. for the healing of this world Woo! and the Whoa! dawning of a brighter day. Spider Lady, we move from right. fear to another way. Right. Look who's the jailbird. Yeah. From <laughs> to faith, love it. Yay! Do it right together. Woo! to pray for the healing of this world and the dawning of a brighter day we move from fear to faith all right thank you all so much for doing that i appreciate it very much okay good morning once again with my real voice. Oh, yeah, should be. Should be on, sorry. Uh, yes, our daily word for the day is passion. And the affirmation reads, my purpose fuels my passion. Purpose sets my heart aflame with passion. Each day I awaken ready to answer the call of my heart to give my best efforts and fullest attention to purposeful activity. Passion is the energy I bring to everything I do. I discover the glory of God through passion as I do the things that make me feel the most alive, that fill me with energy and zeal and color the world with hope and promise. I recognize the divine presence behind it all. God is the source of all the passion I feel and the purpose that drives me. My passion is not for me alone. The life energy that radiates from me inspires those around me to live a life of purpose and passion to boldly express their divinity as only they can. Our scripture today is from the book of Job, chapter 42, verses two, verse two. I know that you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be withheld from you. We've now reached the time of our service for our meditation. For those of you who may be new to meditation, it has been said that prayer is when we speak to God and meditation is when we listen. Now, if you feel comfortable, close your eyes and focus your attention on my voice. Begin to, by taking a deep, relaxing breath and letting go of all the busy thoughts of the day. Now allow yourself to drift deeper and deeper into the quiet peace which resides in each and every one of us. In this quiet space, begin to ask yourself, what brings you joy? 
What are you passionate about? What do you want to create more of in your life? And what is the next step, step to take to achieve the success and peace that you deserve? Now let us ask these questions of the one power and one presence that is in us and surrounds us as we move into the silence. Now, my friends, slowly begin to return your attention to this space, knowing that guidance is already coming your way. It is already a reality, even if you have not yet seen the right path to take. Believe, and it shall be so. And so it is. Amen. Well, come on. Come on and worship with us. Yeah, put your hands together. Let's keep that beat. Well, come on. Come on and worship with us. You use your zeal and imagination and hop on our magic bus. We'll be driving through the heartland. We got a roadmap to the soul. We'll be driving through the heartland. We got a roadmap to the soul. Let sweet spirit be the driver because that's the way we roll. Now catch this. We're gonna sing. We're gonna pray. We're gonna sing and pray every moment of the day. Say woo. Come on and worship with us. You use your zeal and imagination and hop on our magic bus. Gentlemen, take it away. We're gonna sing, we're gonna pray, we're gonna sing, pray every moment of the day we say woo, come on and worship with us. You use your zeal and imagination and hop on our magic bus. You use your zeal and imagination and hop on our magic bus. You use your zeal and imagination and hop on our magic bus. Woo! That was written by Michael Trianophils, by the way.
Yay. Oh, my friends, good morning. Listen, I have a great treat for everyone here and great treat for everyone online. We have managed to dig up the late, great co-founder of Unity, Mr. Charles Fillmore. Don't worry, sir, the dust won't show much. It's going to be fine. It's, you look good. You look, you, look, you look kind of ancient, but you look good. It's good. I think I shrunk a little bit, too, but I did grow more hair. <laughs> but I can tell you that I'm never going to complain about pantyhose ever again. Somebody else had to button this top button for me. Yeah, so I am so glad to be here. We, have, we do have a great speaker today. It's Kelly Isola, and we'll be showing her video in just a few moments. But I wanted to talk a little bit about Halloween and give you a little background on the history of Halloween for those of you who aren't familiar. Hall uh, excuse me. Halloween is a holiday that cel celebrates annually on the night of October 31st. It originated in Ireland and is said to be among the world's oldest holidays. Simple history of Halloween is, it has its origins in the ancient Celtic festival known as Suin. It's a celebration of the end of the harvest season. Traditionally, the festival was a time that was used to take stock of supplies and slaughter livestock for the winter storage. The ancient folks believed that on October 31st, the boundary between the living and the dead dissolved. And the dead become dangerous for the living by causing problems such as sickness, plague, and damage of the crops. The celebration would frequently involve bonfires, upon which bones of slaughtered animals would be thrown. Costumes and masks were also worn in an attempt to mimic the evil spirits or to placate them. Today's essential elements of Halloween, bonfires, costuming, trick-or-treating, telling ghost stories and attending parties, can all be traced back as early as 2,000 years ago. Ultimately, they believed that on October 31st, the Lord of Death would call together all the souls that had died the previous year in order for them to travel to the afterlife. Thus, the living would often disguise themselves in ghoulish costumes in order for the spirits of the dead to think they were one of their, that they were one of their own and pass by them without incident. The villagers would also wear masks and form parades in order to lead the spirits out of town. They would also offer food to the Lord of Death in order to persuade him to be more temperate with, uh, he, when he was judging their ancestors. This is seen as the precursor to trick-or-treating, a key component of modern-day Halloween. So all of these things that we do go back to a very ancient pagan tradition, but we sure have a good time with it, don't we? I don't think we're talking about the uh, spirit of death anymore, but we do have a good time. So this month is zeal. The month of November is zeal. And when Charles Fillmore was 93 years old, he was quoted as saying, I fairly sizzle with zeal and enthusiasm and spring forth with a mighty faith to do the things that are to be done by me today. How many would like to say that when you're 93 years old? <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll have to think about it when we're 93 and like, you know, write down what we say. I fairly sizzle with zeal and enthusiasm. You know, zeal is one of those powers that are easy to talk about because it's pretty self-explanatory. You know, do you have the passion? Do you have the zeal? Do you have that really strong desire that you can put together with love and imagination and manifest in your life? 
zeal. So I know that we had Kelly for Mother's Day, and she gave us a history on Myrtle Fillmore. And I thought it'd be great if she gave us the history, a little bit of a background on Charles, because Charles is the one that came up with the idea of the 12 powers that we've been studying all year long. So with that, I give you Kelly. I am Reverend Kelly Isla, and it is my joy, my privilege, and my pleasure to be with you here this morning. Um, I live here in Lee Summit. Um, I hang around the village quite a bit. I'm sort of like a village lurker. <clears throat> um, but I've actually never spoken here on Sunday morning, so this is a lot of fun for me. So thank you. So there's four older Catholic women sitting around a table playing cards. And they start to talk about their children and bragging about their children as, well, I was raised Catholic, so I know what older Catholic women do and make stories up about how wonderful their children are. <laughs> and they start to talk about their sons, and each one of them has a son that has gone into uh, to be clergy. And the first woman says, well, when my son walks into a room, especially at church or in the fellowship, people refer to him as father, and sometimes as the right reverend. And the women all smile and nod, and that's really wonderful. And the next woman says, well, my, husband, or my son is, a, is an archbishop. And when he walks into a room, people refer to him as his excellency. Mm. And the women go, ooh, nice, excellency. And the third woman says very proudly, well, my son is a cardinal. And when he walks into a room, people say, hello, your eminence. Ooh not just excellency, but your eminence. And the fourth woman is very quiet. She sits there, and the other three women are looking at her, like waiting for her to be bragging on her son. And she's not really sure what to say. And you can see her brow gets a little bit furrowed. And then finally, her, her face lights up, and she says, well, my son is a dancer for Chippendales. And when he walks into a room, everybody says, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> How could you not tell that joke when you open church with a revolution song? <clears throat> right? Yes. It's one of my favorites, particularly because I was raised Catholic. So that's actually a little bit, uh, give you a little taste of what I'm going to talk about today. And I love that we open with revolution. And I'm going to talk about a little bit about Charles Fillmore and some of the heretical things that he has said in his time long ago, but are very much, I think sometimes they kind of get lost uh, in, in what we might call dogma or thinking that I know the right way or this is unity's teaching as though we can stick it in a box, right? And if you ever, if you talk with unity leaders, you'll know that there are about as many boxes as there are ministers. <laughs> So if you're not familiar with Charles Fillmore, he is the co-founder of Unity. He and his wife Myrtle co-founded Unity. And uh, they were really on a mission to, to just, like most of us, searching and yearning, right? And, and something's not working, right? They're, they're on this spiritual journey, they're on this path, and something's not working, something's amiss, something's just, we want something more, right? You don't necessarily cognitively know what it is, but inside, you're kind of like, you're doing this, trying to find. And, um, and sometimes we go on these little journeys, and we're over here, and we're over here, and we're over here, and I lovingly refer to that as spiritual promiscuity. <laughs> We sort of dabble, right? We do a little dabbling. And Charles uh, was very good about do dabbling. And I mean that in the, in the most respectful sense. He, he went searching. He went looking. And in time, um, you know, as he, uh, he and Myrtle joined and people came to join them, and they just started um, coming together in groups and studying and talking and, and seeking truth, um, whatever that might be, um, what he really, one of the things that, that he discovered was uh, that, and this, this is my words when I say that he discovered, when I read Charles Fillmore, this is what I have found from what he discovered, I don't know that he would use these words, but that spiritual truth is really, a, any spiritual truth is really a paradox, mm -hmm. right? It, it really is. Let me give you a for instance. How many of you have heard, if, either in unity or in some teaching, you know, we're perfect just the way that we are. 
You know, we, we don't subscribe to original sin. We just, we were born into this world, original blessing. We're perfect just the way we are. We're whole, and we are the divine in, in you know, manifest form. Anybody ever heard that before? Yeah, so most hands go up. This half of the room is divine. <laughs> and then, if you hang around long enough, then you hear, now let's transform. It's a little bit of a, well, I'm perfect just the way I am, but here I need to change and transform. So which one's true? Yes. Both, right. That's what makes it a paradox, is they're both true. They're both positive, they're both true, and we need them both for the, our wholeness. Right? Ask somebody what's better, to um, inhale or exhale? <laughs> yes. And that, but spiritual truth is like that. Spiritual truth is a paradox that we hold them both. We talk about being and becoming, right? We talk about God is transcendent, you know, everywhere present, this unknowable, unnameable, unchanging entity. And then we talk about God is imminent, which is alive within us as us, which is changing, which is growing, which is moving. So which is it? Yes. So when I, I hear that, and I see that when I, when I started reading Charles Fillmore, I started really sort of taking it on and studying it, and Myrtle as well. And one of the things is, if you read enough of him, and if, actually if you read it in things in chronological order, most books are not written in chronological order, you find that he spoke in, uh, in paradox. I don't know that he did it on purpose. So the reason that I want to talk about Charles Fillmore is that on April 22nd, that's his birthday. He would have been 160. Mm -hmm. Clearly, regeneration did not work out for him. I'm looking pretty good. But he good. would have been 160. Um, and I honestly think he would have had a ball with today's technology. Um, and I think he would have enjoyed uh, kind of where we are. And I think he would also frown on a few things as well. And one of the first things he said in, in, in 1889, the first um, issue of Modern Thought magazine, which we now know as Unity magazine, he, he had an article in there, and he was talking about um, he, w what the point of Modern Thought magazine was. And it was to introduce, you know, an influx of new ideas, to introduce new ideas, to awaken us, to, to go seeking, to go searching. Not to, you know, Char I don't believe that Charles and Myrtle Fillmore gave us, here's what you need to believe. Here's our tenets, here's the beliefs, and handed it to us. I think what they handed to us was, here, keep researching. Right? Here, here's a genetic code to go seeking. Not to hand us doctrine, and this is what we believe. You know, in, in uh, the five principles that, that we teach uh, in Unity were born out of Unity's statement of faith from 1921, which was not the final version. If you know anything about Unity's history, it was 39 statements, and then it was 30 statements, and then it was 27 statements, and then uh, thir 40 statements, and then 17 statements, so I don't know about you, but I can't get my, wrap my head around 39 statements. I'm good with two or three. Like, don't put anything more in my brain. So now what we have today are these five statements. But what he said in um, 1889 in New Thought, uh, in Modern Thought magazine, which is now Unity magazine, and I know Marianne said, turn off your cell phone, but my notes are on here. <laughs> this is what he said. The influx of New Thought is always necessary to life, and he who writes a creed or puts a limit to revelation is the enemy of humanity. Mm. Mm. Wait, that's not even the good part. <laughs> Here comes the really good part. Creeds have ever been the vampires that suck the blood of spiritual progress in the past, and life can only be taught in the present movement by latitude of thought, tempered always by the power that moves the world, love. Creeds have ever been the vampires that suck the blood of spiritual progress. But how do you really feel, Charles? <laughs> <laughs> okay then, I got it. So what I find interesting <laughs> about this statement is that he's very clear about, you know, creeds and, and dogma and not getting too attached to it. But here comes the paradox part. So he's telling us not to get too attached, right, to the creed, to the dogma, to, to something solid, you know, that, that they have blocked our progress in the past when we get really attached to it. 
and to make sure that when we kind of have that going on, that we, the, it's always tempered by latitude of thought, right? It's always tempered by latitude of thought, which is sort of keep our minds open, keep our brains open, and, and the power of love. So what I find interesting, what the paradox for me is that he's saying, he's talking about love as this constant, ever-present thing that is, is right here, right now, that we always need to be connected to, we always need to be in the activity of, that is always there to temper our thoughts, something that's unchanging, and in the same breath, he's telling us, don't get attached to something that's unchanging. Creeds and dogma, right? So which is it? Uh-huh. I, I, I don't know that he, you know, meant to say that, but, but that's where I find great relief. I find wonderful relief in knowing that spiritual truths are paradox. It's not either or, it's yes and. It's yes and. And I think there's a lot of things, teachings, and things that Charles Fillmore wrote that are fairly revolutionary. The word revolution means to roll back. Now, if you know me, some few people here know me, I'm not really a big fan of going back. The minute that I hear somebody go, well, we need to return to, I go, ah! <laughs> you know, we need to go back to, I, I get a little nervous because I don't really want to go back, I want to keep moving forward. However, I need to bring things with me, right? So roll back, revolution means to roll back. So let me roll back and see what are all the things that were said? What did he do? There, there's this never-ending supply of information. So that's kind of the first piece that I, the first quote that I wanted to give you about creeds and dogma being vampires that suck the blood of progress. <laughs> so it just reminds me to, to this most powerful paradox that's alive for us always on this spiritual journey is this paradox of certainty and mystery. And I need them both, right? The minute that you, if you came from a different faith tradition, you probably figured out somewhere along the line that it wasn't quite working for you, right? That the, the belief tenets were, uh, it's not quite, and you probably had this moment of angst, like, okay, that's not working for me, but I don't have anything to stand on, right? Don't be, you know, I have a, a very, um, a mentor in my life, she's deceased now, but was a very older woman who used to say, like, don't be messing with my Jesus. <laughs> and um, like, don't change the rules, right? And most of us come into unity because we need the rules changed. But then we still want something to hang our hat on, like there's one presence and one power, right? So there's this certainty that we, that we hang on to, always tempered by we're seeking, right? The mystery that we, that we can't give words to. So the second uh, heretical quote that I want to uh, give you from Charles Fillmore has to do with the Bible. If you've read Charles Fillmore, you know that um, he quotes the Bible a lot. Oh, yeah. Bible, 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 Bible. And if you grew up in a faith tradition that did that, you, sometimes we have a tendency to throw the baby out with the bathwater. We forget that the Bible is really just a collection of writings written over a thousand years that pretty much is from the perspective and the consciousness of the writer. It reflects the culture of the times. It reflects the politics of the time. It reflects their belief in God at the time. If you actually sit and read, you can get, read the Bible, you get this about at least a dozen different pictures of God. You get that, you know, when you start in the Hebrew Testament and you work your way all the way through the Christian Testament, God, first of all, God starts out as, this, you're sort of at the mercy and the whim of this being. Like, be careful or you'll be smited. And you don't know what you're going to do to get smited. <laughs> right? Or you'd be like Jonah and thrown overboard, but then, the, you know, a fish comes along and swallows you. So you're not sure what God's going to do or when God's going to do it, but there's a lot of violence and there's anger, and, but there's a right way and a wrong way to be. And as you move through the Bible and read the stories, you get to see the belief system that the writers had until you get to the Christian Testament and you start to hear the conversation about love, right? And you get to, and you start to hear a conversation about forgiveness. So it's, we always want to keep that in mind, that it's not... It's not, you know, there's, there's um, truth for us to find in it, but don't get too attached to it. So the, this next quote, and then I, so I found this one um, that I thought that really for, sends people a little bit, just hold on to your seat for a moment um, uh -oh. in case it uh, is a little upsetting. But he says this, I think sometimes we would get along a little faster in our understanding of absolute truth if we quit this constant quotation of scripture. <laughs> he can't write. Yeah, a few people are very happy about that. Quoting scripture. 
Yeah, and then some people are like, what? But I love my Bible. So which is it? And again, I think what he's telling us is, you know, we would get along a little better in our understanding of absolute truth. And what is absolute truth? Not a rhetorical question. <laughs> Give me a word. What's absolute truth? God. What else? Love. What else? Peace. Faith. Yeah. That's absolute truth. So sometimes, he's, what he's saying is we would get along a little better in our understanding of that at times if we quit this constant quotation of scripture. Right? <laughs> now it's going to something outside rather than what Charles Fillmore clearly believed was to believe the truth you can demonstrate. Mm -hmm. Right? Believe the truth you can demonstrate. So he's not saying don't read the Bible, don't quote it, just not constantly. Not constantly, right? Go discover what is for you, what is true for you. So again, he's setting up this paradox, certainty and mystery, right? Mm -hmm. It's okay to, we go to the Bible, but we don't want to get too attached to it. And then finally, the last, uh, the last quote that really, um, that is, I just, it just warms my heart. Uh, and again, it's one of those that sometimes can be a little, a little bit angst producing, is that he says that God is individually formed in the consciousness of each person. God is individually formed in the consciousness of each person. So how many people we have sitting in the room? 300 people, 250 something? I'm not a good judge of counting. So that's how many different gods have been formed. Wait a minute, I thought you said, God, there was one presence and one power. I thought we said that. Didn't we say that at the beginning? We even had it up on a big screen. There's one presence and one power. But God is individually formed in the consciousness of each person. And what that means for me is that it's both. It's both. There are, one of my favorite phrases of my own is, is there are many onenesses. There are many onenesses. God is individually formed in the consciousness of each person. God is individually formed in you, in you, in you, in me, which means that I get to have the God of my understanding, and it doesn't have to match yours, and yours is every bit as true and correct, which means if I stretch that out a little bit further, it requires me to be a little bit more compassionate, a little bit more understanding, a little bit more breathing when I'm met with someone who is radically different from me. You know, I read, I saw the, uh, yesterday there was a news item about the Westboro Baptist Church was going to go and picket Robin Williams' funeral. I'm like, seriously? Like, really? Why? You know, and you can just imagine Robin Williams telling them to, uh, you know, it, it, because, he, because Robin Williams was a supporter of so many different causes you know, for um, equality in marriage, for AIDS, for um, sick children, for, I mean, a, any number of, of charities. And so I'm sure some of those would be offensive to Westboro Baptist Church and want to pick at that. And you can just see him in one of his characters as a, you know, a gay man. He would probably tell Westboro Baptist Church to wear their, their as tall a high heels as they can so we can all see their signs, <laughs> right? I can just imagine him, you know, doing that in his own voice. <laughs> But I had to, once I got through, I had a lot of judgment. You can hear it, right? I, have, I had judgment about it. I still don't agree with their choices, but when I, when I hold that God is individually formed in the consciousness of each person, it includes those that I see as very radically different than me. Is my understanding of God like theirs? Absolutely not. Does that make theirs wrong? Not for them. I don't agree. I don't have to you know, sign on board and support them, but it, it requires me to expand myself, right? At the very beginning, I said, Charles Fillmore said, latitude of thought, tempered always by the power of love, right? So God is individually formed in the consciousness of each person, and we can hold that for each other by latitude of thought. Amen? Amen. Yeah. So that's what I want you to take away from. T okay. All right. Ooh. Okay. Right. Take you later. <laughs> so 
it's my thought, since we've got so many people in costume, and we are going to do the monster mash, perhaps we should have some mashers come up and dance as we do the unity mash. We've changed the words a bit. Don't be shy, dancers. Come forward, please. Irish, am I? Yes, yeah, certainly. Tis the best kind. Tis indeed, darling. Tis indeed. You must agree with me. I am a bit witchy today. <laughs> Only today. Oh, she's here. <laughs> Come on, dancers, you can do it. I was working in the fellowship hall one night when my eyes beheld an eerie sight. The ghost from the White House tiptoed in, and suddenly, to my chagrin, he did the mash. He did the unity mash. They did the mash. It was a spiritual smash. Oh, it caught on in a flash. They did the mash. He did the unity mash from the sanctuary. I heard something say boo from the bookstore and the kitchen and the peace chapel too. The spirits assembled and gathered around me. They were looking for a jolt of our unity. They did the mash. They did the unity mash. They did the mash. Oh, it was an awesome smash. They did the mash. It caught on in a flash. They did the mash. They did the unity flash. Now, scene was a rock, and we were digging the sound. Jamming to the group, some got Bob laid down. The choir was singing a new thought text, backed by the rhythms of Eric and Rex. They played the mash. They played the unity mash. They played the mash. It was a graveyard smash. They played the mash. It caught on in a flash. They played the mash. They played the unity mash. Out from the parking lot there came a lone voice. Seems he was troubled now. He had a choice. He opened the door and he shook his fist. He said, whatever happened to the Bible Belt oh, twist? It's now the mash. Ha ha, it's now the unity mash. It's now the mash. Oh, it is a spiritual flash. It's now the mash. It's caught on in a flash. It's now the mash. It's now the unity mash. Now everything's cool. He's a part of the band. And the unity mash is the hit of the land. It's the music that moves us and stirs the divine. It's the rhythm of spirit in your heart and mind. Let's do the mash. Let's do the unity mash. Let's do the mash. For it's a spiritual smash. Let's do the mash. It caught on in a flash. Let's do the mash. It the did the unity mash. mash. Give woo, up one more time woo, for woo. Daniel and Eric. Yay! Yeah. <laughs> Too fun. Mm. This is the time in our service where we celebrate our prosperity with our gifts, our tithes, and our love offerings. We take up all the energy that's been put forth for our use, for the good of the community, the good of the church. Whether you give online, whether you're an auto tither, whether you come up later today and, or later in the service and put it in a basket that actually is not here. <laughs> that actually is not here. Oh, it's right there. It's right in the second chain. No, that's not it. Oh, but that's right. Like Mar it. Yeah, Marlene's going to give me one. Thank you. Yay! Yay, Marlene! Hi, Marlene. Thank you. It's yes. baby spider sister. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yeah, we haven't started passing the basket yet, so we just keep them up here. But let's take all that energy together, because we know that's what it is. It's energy. Let's pull it into our hearts and uh, bless it together. Divine, Divine love, love through me blesses, blesses and multiplies all that I have. have all, all that, that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God, for the joy of giving and receiving. And so it is. Amen. I'd like to put a final blessing on the offering. 
Mother, Father, God, we know that this offering is the very substance of your being and that it was created for us before the world was even formed. We know, acknowledge, and affirm that according to your perfect law, it returns to each giver, heaped up, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. For an increased understanding of this law, we do give thanks. And so it is. Amen. 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 All right. I did not step off the stage. I just want everybody to notice that. All right. We love to pray here at Unity, and we would love to support you in prayer. We have several ways that we'll do that. There is a prayer request card in the chair back in front of you. You can fill that out and put it in the prayer box um, in the back of the sanctuary. Our prayer chaplains will gather those up and pray for you all week long. You can also come after service up to the front, and our new prayer chaplains will pray with you one-on-one. -on -one. And it doesn't have to be, it can be something that you want to celebrate. Just have somebody uh, stand with you and support you through whatever you're experiencing. We'll also pray for you if you call. You know, if you call the church, chances are I'm going to answer. And I would love to pray with you one-on-one. -on -one. So you can send a prayer request on our website, Facebook, any way you want to give it to us, we want to pray with you. We also would love to know who in the building this morning is their first time here. I know we have a couple. Oh, we have four. Yay! Will you stand up and let us take a stand up and let us see you, if you wouldn't mind. Welcome. Yay. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Woo, 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 woo. Now, this is a packet of information about our ministry. If you'll fill out the form on the front, there's a little form on the front. If you'll take a minute and fill that out and take it to our bookstore, we'll give you a free gift special. And um, I'll give you a call this week to pray with you if you'd like. All right. You can also request information about the Unity Movement or our ministry through Facebook, through our webpage, and you can also call. And we still have a mailbox that still gets stuff occasionally. <laughs> so you can write us as well. So let's all stand and sing our song of peace. One, two, three. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth a peace that was meant to be with God as creator, family all are we. Let us walk with our family in perfect harmony. Perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now, right now. With every step I take, let this be my joyous vow. To take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth. Let it begin with me. All right. Before we say our affirmation, I want to remind you that hospitality is open, and I think I might have seen a cake. Ooh. So we'd love to get to know our newcomers a little better if you'll join us in hospitality for a little snack. And... Uh, Let's say our affirmation together. I, I greet this, this day with zeal and enthusiasm. I love you. Have a wonderful week. Yay. We move from fear to faith. When 
we're gathered together to pray for the healing of this world and the dawning of a brand new day. We move, we move from fear, fear to faith. Yay! Woo. Have a wonderful week.